Hello everybody, it's Ratchi again. I'm back in the studio working today. Um, as, I, as I said from the first video in my FS Studio 1, the inside the making of the rap beat, the drums version. What I did is I showed you the VST around the drums and the idea between them and then I showed you the real live recording from the session musician. Now, as I'm doing this in stages, what I've actually gone and done is I've actually started the drum mix myself now. And then I've bought it, and then I say next one, next video will be the guitars in the FL Studio, the plugins, the live instrument. Then I'll do the guitar mix, and I'll show you it all together and build it up from there. Because in between it, it gives me ears a bit of rest, and I can go in and do. I'm working on projects. There is going to be a pop one inside a pop one. I'm going to do a really early '80s pop track, uh, like a Lionel Richie style track, and I'm going to do that step by step for you guys. Um, which will be the next video along, so I'm going to sort of do two different videos as we go. So I brought the session into Pro Tools, I've set my tempo to 94 BPM. I'll briefly, basically, I'm going to talk about what I did in the session. Uh, the only instruments I did not use were uh, the snares, side snares, from both with the snare and no snare, taking them out because I did, I felt they weren't needed because I've got uh, four snares or yeah, I've got four snares in there, two tops, two bottoms on each one. So there's eight snares all together. Um, and I just I just wasn't feeling it. So so yeah, what have I done? As you can see, this is my this is my thing. I'm not in mixer mode, I'm in edit mode. So I've imported all my drums. As you can see, I like to colour code my drums. Now in music on my board, if I do mix it live in the studio, I'll colour code everything. So my drums would be black sharpie, but because there's not a black colour, the nearest colour I've got is purple. So dark purple is my drums. So without me reading all the names, I can look at uh, I can look at it and go, ah, oh, that is drums because it's dark purple. Blah 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 blah. Uh, as you may see in my comment section, I put no snare, no snare, no snare down there. These are the no snares. Basically, if you look at the snare drum, when the snares are here, that's the snare. When they're not, there's no snares. So very basic. So if I was to send this to another engineer, he could open up and he'll go, no snare. So he should know by the comments that there's no snare on that. So what's actually going to happen in there? I'm going to go step by step between each instrument. I'm going to talk about uh, parallel compression, which is uh, all my greens. Um, a bit of rear bus compression. And then I'm going to talk about my two bus processing, which is the router down to the final mix which you can see there. So let's get on with it, shall we? Basically, first track in my system is the kick in. This is the kick without any uh, without any process on it, full stop. So I went for the reggae style feel. I felt that was much better on this track. I did try a rock version, like mixing like rock drums, didn't really fit well. Try mixing it like pop drums, didn't, because it's hip hop. I would basically mix the flavor from country and use a bit of art from each one to make the mix, to mould it really. So yeah, let's listen to the kick in and we'll go from there. Oh, doesn't want to play now. That's just the kick in mic on its own. So you mute it. That's no processing, this is it raw. Uh, so that's the raw recording of the kick drums, should we say. So, what did I do? Well, first off, all kicks, because it's the central instrument, is at zero, pan zero. So it's unity, pan, straight down the middle. So there's no pan on it. Um, I did set it to a 3.8, minus 3.8 dB fade uh, on the mixer. So, what I did is, I took that in all its glory and I also took the kick out so the two kick mics together that's the outside kick and that's at 1.1 so it's not as uh, beefy or not as low so just this is just to blend them in uh, so what I'll do is I'll talk about kick in bike and what I did is first off I got a, a dynamic free expander gate which is a Pro Tools plugin as you can see, I set it quite on the range, the gate and range to minus 19.8 dBs. 
a quick attack at 10 milliseconds, a hold for 17.2 milliseconds. So it's quite a uh, big hold. The ratio is set to 29.31. That is a real, you know, that's big ratio uh, to set. The release is a long release, and the threshold is around 16.6 .6 dBs down. Um, I do have a high pass filter, high pass filter set at 848 hertz, and a low pass filter at 71.8. So you can sort of see from the spectrum. So this is the kick in without any processing on it, totally. Now let's engage the expander gate. Bypassed. And engaged. Bypassed. Engaged. So we'll engage it. Next in my list is a Kramer HLS. Now this is a it's an EQ, uh, basically, and it's all I'm doing on this is I'm only boosting 60 hertz at the bottom of the bass because uh, it felt like it needed it. 120 too much, 250 too much, 60 just right, and I'm, I'm only boosting it by 2 d 2.9 dBs, so I've also reversed the phase and put the EQ cut on it. So this is obviously just the expander in it. Now let's add the Kramer in it. So buy it, move it. Beef it up a little bit, yeah. So that's just brought the bass up a little bit. Uh, and then we go down to our EQ band seven. Now, what did I do here? I have actually just EQ'd the I have EQ'd the low frequency with a uh, basically a low frequency, a tight Q at 32 hertz. I brought that up to 6.1 dBs, so that's quite a uh, quite high. And then I've taken the low mid frequencies out, the mid frequencies. I oh know I've kept the mid frequencies in at four about 400 4, 4K, about 4K, and brought that up to 5.9 dBs tight Q again. And then my high frequency, I've brought up to 10k, and I've just boosted it. I haven't boosted it all, and so that's just at one. So let's just, uh, so let's uh, play it. That's with the Kramer and the uh, expand the gate. Now let's add this EQ in. Just getting there, a little bit beefier, and now. Just to add that glue to it, I put the R bass in it, the Renaissance bass from Waves. Now, this is an EQ, but it's to boost. So basically, I'm at a frequency of 50, because that's what I felt if you when I moved the slider along, you felt too much bass, too little bass, and then it just sat right about 50 hertz. Any lower, about 48, you start getting it to crumble. So I say there's no gain reduction, it's just the intensity at minus 4.0. So, without it, with it, without it, it sounds flat, with it, without it, with it. So, it sounds quite beefy, that kick. Now, I'm going to mute that kick and go on to kick, uh, kick out, which is the second outside kick. Now, with it being bland, I say bland on its own. Let's play that. It's a bit flat, yeah. So again, same settings as before on the kick in because it's the same kick drum, just different mics. They're exact same mics. I know that because the uh, drummer or the recording, I was there when they recorded it. Uh, so yeah, exact same thing. So you can just copy it down. If you want to copy it quickly, just click copy settings or control shift C. In, in, pull the expander gate and uh, press paste, which is uh, Control Shift V. Uh, let's play that back without the expander. Now put the expander in. Yeah, can hear it hitting a little bit hard. And then I've got the Kramer HLS in, in it again. Again, boosted at 60 hertz. 
in the base EQ. No uh, no gain reduction, no uh, base boost, just at 60 hertz. Um, reverse the phase, EQ cut it. That's all I've done here. And uh, if you listen to that, back. That's this is with just the expand on it. Now let's uh, let's put the uh, Kramer in. Yeah, let's not boost it at the moment. I might come back and revisit it later on. I always do flip between the two. So without it, with it. So now, if we play both kits all together. Uh, take that off. Yeah, they're all enabled. So let's play both drum kick drums together. This is what they sound like. Yeah, so you got that nice beefy sound, but yeah. It's more refined, and that's just peaking up minus 1.1. Nothing too major. Just sat there because it's an outside mic. The inside mic's doing all the uh, driving, so it's more sub. So let's move on to our snare top two. This is with the snare activated, not without it. So this is with the snares down. Uh, and again, this is the two top snares because they're the same mics, minus 5.4. So Basically, I think the settings are the same. I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's have a look. Expander, gate. Uh, range at 39.3. Quick attack. Hold 200 milliseconds. Threshold minus 24.3. Release 130 milliseconds. And the ratio of 11.8. Uh, the high pass filter is cut off at 4.4k. Where the low frequency is at 580k. Um, so let's play the snare back, mute them too. Let's play the snare top one back with the expander active. Yeah. Now bypass it. That cuts a lot of the hi-hat out of the spill. So there's not much hi-hat in there anymore. Moving on, again, another EQ. What do I do here? I've pretty much kept the settings all the same. Uh, yeah, kept the settings all the same. I boost the low mid frequencies by 4.1 dB and brought the high mid frequency down to minus 5.7. We're boosting the 6K at 1.3. So let's activate that. Yeah, just, just boosted that little frequency there. You know, so not much. I then took it into the SSL E series, and let's start from the top because it make it much easier. I've rolled off anything below 70 hertz. Uh, 120 was a bit messy uh, with the snares active, so anything below 70 hertz has been cut out. The high mid frequencies at 10k boost again is going up 6 dBs. The high mid frequency at 7k is 4 dB boost. Uh, the 800 hertz, Taylor hertz, is at zero thing, and the 200 or yeah, 220 is a 6 dB boost again. Um, I have left the threshold and the ratio down how they come because I'm only using the filter and the, the EQ side of things. So let's activate that. Bypassed, active, bypassed, active. Uh, what else did I do last but not least? I think I put a lo-fi on it. Yes, I did. Lo-fi, because basically I wanted a bit of still distortion, but not much. So a 0 0.7, 0 0.7, very small distortion on it, just to give it that feel to it. Yeah. So that's that snare top. Snare top two is a, the same of the same settings as the uh, e uh, 
that's now top one. Same settings on the uh, expanded gate. Yeah. Just cut the hi hat out. Same settings on the uh, EQ because basically I think nine times ten it is a direct copy. Yeah, it is a direct copy on the uh, all the plugins because it's the same snare. Yeah, same levels, same thing. Now let's play them with the kits. Yeah, you get that feel, that nice little groove going on. Mute them. Snare bottoms, one and two. Uh, again, because they're the bottom mics on the snare, they will have the same... Uh, expand the gate to them so they got a range of minus 30 dbs a quick attack a hold for 200 milliseconds minus 24 on the threshold a medium release 130 milliseconds quite a late release and a 30 to 1 ratio which is quite high the high pass filter is at 4.4 the low 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 filter is at 590 so we're cutting out the subs and putting it in the mids there um let's bypass that You can hear the snares in that one, yeah? And let's go into this little thing here. And this is just a high pass filter I've done at 120. High pass filter at 120 just to uh, bring it up a bit. And that's all that is. And that's a set, set of minus 16.9 um, EQ. Again, they're exactly the same because they're the same snare. Same stat, same. So let's unmute them from the tops and the kicks. So yeah, they're uh, so yeah, as you can see, uh, they are much the same. Uh, now there's no snares, no snares. I've imported snare, the same snare drum, but with no snares attached to it. So we'll solo that, and we'll solo that. These are set at minus 16 and minus 17, because they're quite, if you listen to them without any processes on them, like this. They sound very flat. So again, went to the expander gate, a range of minus 39.3 on the range. A really quick attack at 10 milliseconds, a hold at 200 mils, milliseconds. A medium release at 130 milliseconds, a minus 24.3 threshold, and 11.81 on the uh, on the expanded gate. 4.4 high pass filter, 580 mid filter. So, I'm not sure if that's no, they're not the same uh, settings. So yeah, this is a uh, the snare top with that. Then I went into the EQ again. And uh, again, I just boost the uh, boost the low mid frequencies to 4.1. Everything else is pulled down. So same as the snare top on that one. Again, I went to the SSL. And uh, sorry about this. Basically, with it being uh, with it being a more of a snare instrument, I'm actually rolling off at 120 instead of 70, like the other one. Uh, a Q. 10,000 uh, kilohertz a boost of 4 dBs the 7 a boost of 0 dBs 8 800 0 dBs 220 3 dBs that's all I'm using on that again the EQ so let's enable that and play it back yeah and again low fire 0.7 distortion Basically, it's got the, they got the snare tops got the same settings as the snare tops, the other ones, but they're tweaked a little bit to suit them in. So the expanded gate, same as the other one. So exactly the same copy over. Uh, by that same boost as the tops. SSL, exactly the same because it's a direct mic. Uh, 120. All the settings are the same on the SSL. Uh, Lo-fi again 0.7 distortion just to give it a bit of a boost so that's that all done 
So that's what that sounds like. The snare bottoms for them, all they got is expanders on them. And that again has got minus 30 range, 10 milliseconds, 200 mil milliseconds, 24 uh, threshold, 130 milliseconds release, 30.1 ratio, and then a 4.4k high pass and a 590 low pass. That's all they have on them, really. There's not much because it's just mic spill, really. That's all they want. And they're just down at 17.8 and 17.1. Just kicking back. So what I'll do is I'll mute the snares so you can listen to them all together. And now the kicks. Okay, the hi-hat. There's no processes on the hi-hat whatsoever. Uh, it's just kicking back at minus 3.6 and pan to the left. Now, with me, I either pan at audience perspective or drum perspective. This is actually pan to audience perspective. Because if uh, drummer's perspective to the left, if it was audience, it would be to the right. 24, because that's just that area there. The snares will be panned at a later date, potentially. Uh, only by a couple, no more than uh, 10 or 15 because it would be less pan than that. So that is that really, just boost it up really. Uh, got room mic one. What do I do with room mic one? Nothing, there's no processing on room mic one because it's just rooms. Uh, so let us mute all of them quickly. Uh, let us mute them. Uh, the room mics are just there. 11.3, 100% to the left, because they that would be the room ones on the left of the room. And the room two, exactly the same, but to the right, 100% to the right. And 11.3 on them. Because it's not it's more picking up kick and snare, and that's all they're doing. So they're probably more towards the kick and snare. The overhead mics, which I know for a fact were right above the drum kit. Yeah. They're just picking up the snare and kick. Again, they're kicking at 17.9 minus 17.9 dBs. 100% left, 100% right. They're right above the snares on the way down, looking down. So let us unmute all the drums now. Uh, let's unmute all the drums and uh, listen to them all back with all the processing going on. Okay. Yeah. Just kicking back. Now, we're moving down to the greens, which I'm going to change. They're actually going to go blue. Uh, they're actually going to go like blue because they are sends. I've got two sends. Uh, now I've got three sends and one I'm still working on. I've got KS Crush, which is kicking snare crush. Um, that's that minus 2.0. That is a send that goes from the kicking snare crush down to the rhythm. Uh, router down to router main, which is this uh, plug in here, and then out there to master final, which is another aux, and then output. Because I don't put my processor on the master channel, it is actually going in there, and the master's at 5.4, so it's getting it's going through, going being brought down, and then being EQ'd and compressed and ready to go to print. It's quite complicated, I'll talk about that later on. So the kick and snare, I've put in the comments, kick and snare crush, so they, so if another engineer opens this up, he will look at it and go, oh, he kick and snares, so all the kick and snares should be coming through this channel here. Again, it's set at minus two. Uh, the processing or the effect on there is the cream of pie. This is a compressor uh, by the other, uh, by Waves. It's a good compressor because it's uh, 
So what have I got? Uh, let's see. I've got an output of 5 plus 6 dB. So the output is going up 6 dB. The threshold is coming down by minus 2. The compression ratio is 5 to 1. Uh, I think it should be either 3 to 1 or 4 to 1. But obviously because I can't do it, I've gone up to the nearest one. And uh, the decay time is 4 times 100 milliseconds. So that's 400 milliseconds. Lovely bit of gear, the cream pie. Uh, that's all the drums. So let us let us unbypass that. And now, remember, I said all the kicks and snares are going to it, aren't I? So I need to... I need to unmute them all. So all the Ks are kick, crush. Uh, all the Ks. So this is all the kick and the snares going through. So this is now going with the original going through the send. This is also sending out to the kick and snare crush, which is also then sending into the main router there. So basically how it works is all these uh, effects like kick in, kick out are being sent from their original thing down to the router main, which is this here. And then the router main is going into, and that router main signal is going into the, the router. And router is going into the master final, and master final is going to the output one and two. So, yes. So that being said, I've got, um, so yeah, that's all being said. So they're coming into this uh, crush thing here. I can solo this up. So if you listen to it, we'll see what the cream pie is doing to it. So, so it's doing a lot of output in, input, quite level on the meter in. Let's bypass it. That's that bypassed. Now enable it. Without it, with it. Without it, with it. It just brings some life to the drums, really. And that's it. And then, with that, I've also sent the uh, snare verb. Snare to a snare verb, which is a snare reverb. Now, that's sitting at minus 23.5, so it's right back. Because I don't want the... I want the reverb to be there, but I don't want to overpower. So... How do I get a nice reverb? What I did is I put C1 gate on there by Waves. Great little thing. All I've done is left it open and brought the gate down to minus 22 there. So it's just that part there. A quick attack, quick release, no hold on it. And uh, if we play it without the bypass, so if I solo that up. Um, no, let's, uh, let's make all these active again. Let's unmute them. So let's make them all active. Um, as you can see, they're all different levels. So I've listened to each snare back and I've adjusted the levels by how much reverb I can hear on it. So that's that. And let's just see what the C1 gate's doing to it. Uh, let's solo that. Do that. So just bring it nicely in. Uh, some bypass it. That's all that's doing. And then I brought in a. I. What did I bring in? I brought in a true verb. And all I've done is use a short vocal plate. Oh, shoot. I've uh, got rid of it now. Uh, short vocal plate, because I didn't want a short plate on there. Uh, pretty much just left it at default because I don't want much reverb. Uh, so let's unbypass that and let's listen to it back. Listen to it again. Yeah, it's just there nicely in the background. Uh, obviously, I put snare reverb on there, so if an engineer listens to it back, uh, whoever, if they, they can open up the session, and they can look at it and they can go, ah, oh, that's a reverb. Okay, I can see where he's going with that. But I don't want that. Let's replace it with whatever they feel. So they can work on it if they feel it needs working on. Uh, that's all that's there. Again, 
minus 23.5. I do have a drum crush, which is a same as that one, but it's designed for overheads of rooms. Obviously, they're all bypassed at the moment because I haven't finished working on it. Uh, also have a bit of rear bus compression. Now, the rear bus compression is for more bass and all that. So, what have I got on it? I've got the CLA 76. I've got an all ratio, quick attack. Quite a big lead, uh, uh, quite a long release, five. An output of uh, minus nine. Uh, an input of uh, minus 36. That's all that's doing, really. I say it's bypassed at the moment because I'm not really busting any bass or anything at the moment. I've got, obviously, I've got some uh, controls. So I've got my drum master. So I can adjust levels of all my drums on the group. So I'll have a bass group, a guitar group, and a string group. It then goes into the master one, which you could say, oh, it's just for mastering. But that's bringing the level down to minus 5.4. So when you master, you want a room of a mat minus 6 dB. So that's what that's doing. From there, it goes into the router. Now, I've done the router early, so I'm listening to the track after the processing is done. And uh, the router itself is different, uh, different things. And uh, let's have a look at what that is. So let's see. That's all soloed. That could be unmuted. So yeah, so FX active now. Great, let's see what it's doing on the router. So there it's going into the master, minus 5.4. Coming into the router now. And I've got the Jack Joseph plug-in collection, the plug child, which is a it is the, the Waze version of the Fairchild by UAD. Great plug-in. I've got I only had it a couple of days. It's a compressor. Um, and it's well, basically, I've linked the channels up so basically, they're exactly the same left channel input is five, right channel input is five, three. That should be five. Uh, threshold 1.5, 1.5, 1, left, right. I mean, I can select linked, uh, but I want left, right. And then no output gain. So it's not really doing much. Just kicking back, really. It shouldn't move much. Yeah. Minus, minus two. And the good thing about Waze plugins is they've got... Uh, they got plug-in presets done. So you, their working space is well worth the money. I know they cost a lot, but they're well worth the money. Um... Great. From there, it goes into I think uh, API two API two five zero zero. Sorry, or uh, two seconds. So uh, the API uh, compressor two five hundred compressor. What's it doing? Eight eight uh, plus eight dBs. And not put three on the attack. Uh, in infinite. Ratio, so ratio is turned right up. The release is turned right up, and that is it, really. And all that is doing is just uh, compressing a little bit more. Yeah, uh, I then put into a Q8, uh, which this is a really cool thing. You can click there, go back to the modern one, but from 25th anniversary of Waves. They've done this cool thing, and all I'm doing is around the uh, 8,000 mark, I'm boosting it 0.9 dBs in a shelf. I might take it off, I might not, I don't know. I might replace it with the Brainworks plugin, maybe, uh, if I can get my hands on it. So, what's that doing? So, yeah, that's all that's doing. That's all that's doing. Just a little bit of rise. Again, I might take it off. I might not. I don't know. And then after that, it goes into a Poltec EQ. Again, a great PQ EQ just to boost. And what am I doing? The low frequency at 100 hertz. I'm boosting it by 3 dBs. 
Uh, the attain, I think. Bandwidth is set to 7. So it's got a big bandwidth on it. And then and the high frequency is at 10k. Again, boost their 3 dBs. And then that's about it, really. No output gain. Again, they come with uh, uh, plugins to start working on it. And you can just go from there, really. And let's listen to that on Bypass. Bypass. It brings out some life. As you can see, uh, if you look in my monitor stage there I'm clipping in just in the purple orange there anymore that's the red that we don't like that in the thing and so what I do is I've added this little limiter on it the L1 limiter from Waves all I've got is a release of 4 the out ceiling at 0.2 uh, minus 0.2 and the threshold at minus 0.2 with this limiter on, it brings it right back down to the green. It looks like I know what I'm doing and that everybody's happy. And everybody's happy because there's no pluck, or no, um, because there's no uh, peaking on it, no, whatever you know, thing. So if we get into the mix window, this is what the mix looks like at the moment. You can see it's going to double in size because the next one, next thing I'm going to add is the bass and all that in there. So yeah, that is the mix in the Pro Tools 12. I say I've set up groups, drum group, bass group, guitar group, and string group, just so I've got ultimate control. Uh, the next section of the video will be a look into the hip-hop mix, the production side of things, which will be the guitars. So we'll be going over the bass, guitar, acoustic guitar, and the lead guitar. Um, although, although there is no lead guitar in the actual production stage, the guitarist I work with quite regularly he heard he said what about a bit of an e-guitar at the end maybe so if he puts it in great if not we'll work around it but yeah we've definitely got the bass snare guitars i think we've got about three guitars because i've got a room recording on the guitar left and right the main guitar itself which is di and then we'll work through that do the basses on two and then that'll be i'll do the production side of things i'll show you the live audio and then i'll do the i'll show you the idea i had the all live recorded of it and then i'll do the mix and i'll show you the mix so as time goes on, as everything goes on, we'll be going step by step through the mix. So there'll be the next two videos coming up. In the video after that, or the video I'm going to do in the start of, I'm going to start working on an 80s pop song. I've been listening to a lot of Rolando Ritchie, and uh, I'll do a song like that, maybe Christina Aguilera style. And what I'll do is I'll do that step by step again. I'll do, uh, I'll do the production side of things and at each step I'll do the talk about it do a video about 30 minutes long on each stage and then that'll be the production session and then I will take it record it mix it again so then you can see the mixing stage of the pop song again guys if any of you got any mixes you want doing send them my way I'll mix them for you I'm looking for an EDM track to mix next to do my uh, EDM mixing video on um, and we go from there apart from that have a good day any questions, please ask.